Oh, look what I got. Yes, I got the uh, big ass Imperial Knight Titan. Not playing 40k, not playing uh, Space Marines, or I guess you can take this for a few other armies, but uh, you know, it's not my thing, but it looked cool, so I had to get it. So, um, yeah, there you go. We're gonna do this in two separate videos. First is gonna be a uh, assembly video. A little roughshod one, just to see where the, uh, at least my take of where the best, what the best way is to assemble this thing, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of magnet, magnetization, mag, magnetization, that word, putting magnets in it, uh, going on, and so I'm just gonna show you where I think those those should go and uh, move from there, and then part two will be the painting, but uh, for the moment. I'm gonna get started on this thing and uh, I'll turn the camera back on when I uh, come across something interesting. After about an hour, got the legs together. At least the, uh, the bare portions of the legs. We're gonna be leaving off all the plates until after the painting. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Anyway, uh, started on the torso and we got the first part that needs some modification. So here's the top part of the knight and you have the bottom here, the legs, and there's a ball joint here, which slides up like nya. And um, so you're supposed to glue this in place. Oops, you're supposed to glue this in place. But uh, actually, one of the tips they have in the well, yeah, White Dwarf. That's what it's called now. They, they changed the name of the magazine. So White Dwarf is the weekly one. Uh, but anyway, they said to put a little piece of sprue on top to lock it in place. Uh, on top of this little nub so that way it locks this thing in place but still allows you to turn it uh, however I'm going to put a magnet in there instead because that will allow it to be popped off and easier to store and also would make it easier to paint so we're going to put a magnet in there uh, first thing I need to do is cut off this little nub so I fiddled around with a couple different ideas of how to magnetize this and I came up with this which is probably the easiest method I trimmed off the little nub and kind of sanded it flat because I was planning on something else but then I uh, thought of this way I got two I believe these are three millimeter by 12 size rare earth magnets and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue one on the inside of this dome cap and then that's gonna go here and then the other one I'm just gonna glue to the top of this ring like that and these are really powerful and even though they're kind of sta spaced far apart there's still enough uh, magnetization to hold them together and the, what the benefit of is this is since the magnet is on this side of the plastic and this one is on this side of the plastic there's no uh, chance of like the glue not being strong enough and the magnets pulling out of the glue this way there's no way the magnets gonna push all the way through all that plastic so all I have to do now is uh, glue these both into place and move on and we're good to go. So we are moving right along here. I got the main body assembled and I got my magnet inside. Uh, decided to rough up the surface here of this little ball joint and just drilled some holes. That's just for some added uh, grip. The magnets are strong enough, however, due to the two very smooth surfaces. This was sliding around a bit too much, so that just gives it a bit extra grip, and it'll be improved once there's paint on it. Uh, but right now it's not sliding as much as it was. Now working on the arms, got the chainsaw arm together, and I decided to magnetize this portion here, which admittedly is not really necessary at all since uh, you can't change out the uh, the chainsaw arm. However, I'm planning on uh, doing it on the other arm where it does have multiple weapons and uh, just to make it match and also in case it gets knocked it's less chance of breaking the model it'll just pop the magnet off and also uh, probably Forge World will come out with extra weapons eventually so uh, hopefully it'll be the same connection point. But I got the two uh, arms here where the it joins to the weapons and so two of them are the same you can see one of them I've hacked off this little uh, lip here where it goes into the arm and holds it very securely and I'm going to 
use some two millimeter magnets, one on each side. And I can't put, uh, I would have liked to drill a hole into here and put the magnet in so the glue has three sides to uh, adhere to. However, I don't have a bit, a drill bit of the proper size. I only got small stuff. Um, so instead I'm going to hack down this thing a little bit because as it sits right now I can't put them just on there because it doesn't fit the arm entirely. So I'm just going to use my saw, cut that off, and then glue the magnets in place. And I've been using some your generic industrial glue type stuff where I got here. Some Loctite Stick and Seal, which I've been using for magnets lately. Um, it actually works a little bit better than uh, Super Glue because it has a little bit of flex to it and it's less likely to uh, snap. Uh, so that will work out very well. And also one tip when you're gluing magnet to magnet, don't glue one piece into here and then the other piece into here. Uh, first of all, uh, there's always the possibility of getting the the polarity is wrong and I'm actually, actually having them repel, which I've done more than once. But also, if you glue this one at uh, a slight angle and glue the one in here at a different slight angle, you'll have problems getting them flush. So what I'll do is I'll glue one side to here and then once that's fully dry, I'll add glue into here and maybe a little putty and then insert it all together until it dries and then once it's dry I can pull it out and you'll have one magnet on each side and they'll both be flush. So let's do that. Alright, more stuff stuck together and more magnets being inserted. Um, I decided to magnetize the shoulder uh, area and did essentially the exact same thing that I did with the waist. Um, have a magnet in here. This is a, a 2 by 10 I believe millimeter magnet and again just like with the waist it's just to kind of hold it in place. It's not super secure because it's going through the plastic but uh, again very uh, strong bond at least on this side. On the other side yeah, um, I had to put some putty underneath this to make the magnet uh, flush so it's as strong as as possible at least for this build um, and this is some cool stuff that I just recently found it's working great for this project procreate uh, stick putty this is a five minute epoxy putty and it is five minutes which is real great I don't have to wait hours for uh, the epoxy putty to dry and literally five minutes it doesn't dry super rock hard but dries hard enough um, so it's great for one I just need to fill a gap somewhere real quickly um, so it's behind the magnets here and uh, I could use something else to build it up some balsa wood or some sort of you know just something to raise it but I was this stuff like I said five minutes it goes you know in whatever shape I need it to be and it's done uh, I do have uh, the mat this thing is a little bit movable I did not use any magnets on this part uh, because there's enough plastic surface area that I think it'll hold for a good long time uh, just make sure you don't glue this in and that little piston there don't glue that in place either and you do get a little bit of movement out of this now the arms that I magnetize here later uh, well, excuse me earlier uh, I did that because I thought that the gun actually had uh, a different connector point for each weapon this piece right here and it doesn't so I thought I can just put the magnet here and pop it off, pop this part off, and then stick on uh, the different gun. Unfortunately, it, that doesn't work that way. So what I'm going to do is kind of uh, fudge things a little bit. So this is the main gun, and this piece makes up both of the other guns. The you know I don't even know what they're called, multi melta and cannon. I'm going to call them, um, but this one goes on like that or the cannon one goes on the same. So um, what I'm going to do is basically magnetize it here, again using that putty and some magnets. So this piece switches in and out. And then what I went so far is to magnetize the, 
This is the ammo rack for the cannon, and this is the the tanks for the fight the flamethrower. I guess it's not a, whatever it is, multi melter. And so they go on here, and rather than putting a magnet on the back here, I decided just to try a little bit of uh, sheet metal. And uh, mainly, I, I could have used a magnet as well, but I just kind of wanted to see if this would work. And uh, also, because it's sheet metal, it gives me a little bit more fudging room since there's two different pieces that have to go on here. If I used a magnet, I would have to get them both lined up uh, pretty much in the exact right position, so the magnet won't pull the piece out of alignment. Uh, the sheet metal gives me a little bit more play. And it's not super strong, because we only got a 6x2 magnet in there. But it's a little tiny piece, so it's good enough. And then you switch this out here. Again, holds fine. And so you switch that on, and then this magnet will uh, be a magnet in here to switch out the gun. And that's it. And so here we are. Uh, it's pretty much done, the build portion is. I got a lot of pieces still off, but we're gonna leave those off until painting, but at least all the magnets are in. So let's do a run through here. We got the waist, that's magnetized. And uh, the magnet in here is pretty strong, but because of all the plastic, it's a little weak, and this is a very heavy top. It does balance as long as both arms are connected. If you take one arm off, it does kind of flop to the side, but you know, when you're going to run it with one arm. Um, so we have that here. We got magnets on the shoulders on each side, so if we can pose these any way we want. Uh, we have the magnet here, so we can turn the arm. This area is not glued entirely, so we got a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, same thing on the other side. Oops, there we go. So up and down and all that. Then for the gun here, pull that off. There we go, huge magnet here. Uh, a little bit smaller one on this side. And so we pull this off to change out the multi melter thing. Pull off the, there we go. The other one there with the sheet metal inside. Attach the other portion. There we go. And um, had a problem getting a large magnet in here to glue. Um, so what I did was I used three smaller magnets, which I can drill into the putty. What's it going on? I don't know. There we go. Okay. So that's on. So that's all the magnetization done. Put this thing back together with the other arm. And there you have it. So this guy is pretty action posy. This is definitely an action figure I just built. Tilt them up, turn them to the side side, adjust the arms however you want. Uh, things I could have done differently is um, I probably could have skipped putting the magnets here. Um, originally I thought that this whole gun piece couldn't come off and then replace the other gun so I wanted to match on the other side but that's not the case. Also, it's a bit too fiddly, I think. The arm's in too many pieces now. Um, also, trying to get the magnets here to stay uh, glued was a bit difficult because it's just a flat surface to glue them in. It would be better if they were sunk in. I could have done, perhaps, something like that. Drill several small magnets into here rather than using this one. Um, however, it's generally not a good idea to try to match small magnets with larger magnets because uh, e equal size magnets, they have equal force uh, attracting <clears throat> excuse me, to each other. If you start using a, a smaller magnet to a larger magnet, it doesn't necessarily want to stick to the entire magnet. It kind of wants to find the sweet spot. So when you're using that on something that's intended to be twisted around, it doesn't always work out. And also the uh, the original mount here that GW made was decent. Uh, Again, I thought maybe eventually they'll come out with removable arms, and that's why I did it, but, uh, or the original one maybe come a little bit floppy, but it was actually, it was a decent mount. I probably should have left that one alone, but build is done. We just got to fill in some seams, and then we're going to move on to the paint.